We'll be starting the stream shortly. This is just a quick sound test. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It's a dark and damp Tuesday night here in the UK, but no matter. The Chess Skunk Works series must continue. Welcome to Hashtag Chess Tuesday. Who have we got in the chat with us today? DC is with us. Just been talking with DC. He's saying he's figuring out how to compose data in something easy to create a dashboard from today. It sounds like you're doing kind of data cleansing exercise there, DC. Let us know how that's going. Jeff is with us as well. So welcome, Jeff. And I've got Jeff actually to say a particular thank you to let me know how the sound is, by the way. It doesn't sound quite right in my cans here, but let me know in the chat how the sound is. Got to say thank you to Jeff first, because Jeff, in the previous uh, Skunk Works, uh, Jeff pointed out a problem, which is um, I managed to delete a piece of code that was very much needed. <laughs> and it's a piece of code that controlled the king moves. It means our king now has, how can we say this? Some kind of gender confusion. We could say maybe the king now thinks he's a queen. And we can see this on the board. We hit the king there. The king has the queen's powers. So this is a Tuesday night. We're not playing with any gender roles on a school night. So the first thing we've got to do is isolate that mistake, find it in the code, and then try to restore the king to the king's proper movement pattern, which of course is a single cell in each direction. So thank you, Jeff. I know you're in the you're in the chat for pointing that one out. Let's get into the VBA editor, Alt F11 shortcut. And one thing I did do right when I was doing this wrong, so I managed to make a mistake in the right way, was that I retained the code. I retained the code. 
Um, so I didn't delete it. I just commented it out, commented it out. Not sure how many syllables are in that phrase, but I just turned it into a comment. So you can see we've got an inverted comma here. So I'm going to take it out, put it back in. We can see the text is now green. So Excel is going to ignore that text, but we can retain it. We can retain it should we need to use it later. And in this case, it is useful for us. Now here it says range movement, movement range limiter for night. So that annotation is not accurate because this is the movement range limiter for the king. So I'm not sure how I got that wrong. Maybe I got confused between the K and the N. So in chess notation, generally the N uh, means night, but night of course has a K on. So it's a bit of a quirky thing in chess and the king begins with a K, of course. Uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, if, if you're tuning in, make sure you say hello. Got a few people maybe who haven't said hello in the chat yet. So we actually want to reactivate this part of this part of the code here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the inverted comma and we can see the text is the code is reactivated there. We can tell by the coloring. So we've got the black and blue coloring that we typically associate with VBA code. So this should give us a one part of our limiter and this is the column limiter it looks like so this is going to uh, limit the lateral movement of the king maybe, maybe we can test this now it's going to reset the code uh, control s save the file and then hit the king again and we can see here uh, <laughs> what does what does that remind you of must be must be a rocket or something we can see that we do have the lateral movement, the side to side movement is limited there. Oh dear, it's going to be one of those days, guys, one of those days. So the lateral movement is limited. Well, we need to limit the up and down movements as well. What are we going to do? Well, we could write out a new line of code, but we know this line of code is going to do a similar thing. So let's recycle the existing line of code. And then we're going to think, where are we going to put this? And here we can see the value of having properly structured code or at least code that is reasonably well structured. I was going through this earlier, you know, it's not perfectly structured. It's not completely kiss, uh, consistent with the indentation. So this line of code is before the end of this embedded loop. So without getting stuck into the detail, we can work this out because we just need to go to the end of the next loop, the end of the containing loop. So I'm going to copy paste this line of code control C and then just drop it in. So it's going to be just above where we close the other loop. Remember, we've got two loops working together here. One loop is controlling the columns. So moving across the columns and one loop is moving across the rows. There we go. Trying to make that in that indentation as consistent as possible. So we've got a similar similar line of code, but it's not exactly the same. We do need to make some changes. Who's in the chat? We've got Mayank in the chat. Mayank, welcome. Is it your first time in a Tuesday night? Hashtag Chess Tuesday stream, Mayank. You'll have to let me know, but fantastic to see you. So the question always, Mayank, is um, what's the weather like? Where are you tuning in from? What's the weather like? Maybe you're tuning in from a sunnier part of the world than, than the UK, which is pretty, pretty depressing at this time of year. I've got to say, apart from the beautiful autumn colors, which are rather lovely. So we're going to change this. And earlier on, we were talking about call count. So now we're talking about row count. Because here we're counting through the rows. So I'm just going to change this. Swap the calls for rows. And again, we can see the benefits of good coding habits. Here we've got a consistent naming convention for the variables. That's allowing me to quickly make those changes, quick sense check, control S, save the file. So now we're going to lose our rocket, rocket. We're going to lose our rocket shape and hopefully we'll get the proper king movements back. So I'm going to click the king twice and that does seem to have worked. So we seem to have got our limiter back. So I'm going to put the king in the middle of the board. This would be a very exposed position for a king. In fact, I don't think this position will be possible in chess. But maybe somebody can tell me because the king couldn't jump over a pawn and a pawn can't move backwards. Uh, seems to be working. Let's try the king on the side. Seems to be working. Let's try the king in the corner, which, you know, is usually where the king is in chess. 
We've got the king there. Okay, seems to be working. Black king seems to be working well too. Okay, so hopefully we've managed to fix that mistake I made last time. And Mayank says, yes, this is the first time. Mayank tuning in from India. Fantastic. What part of India, my friend? And India, wow. It's a place I'd love to go to. Never been. I consider myself fairly well traveled. I've been to lots of places in Asia and I lived in, in Asia for four years. Uh, but I've never been to India and my ang I love Indian food or at least the Indian food I've eaten in the UK, which probably isn't very authentic. But I'd love to go out there one day and really sample some beautiful curries and all of the food you've got out there. I love all that stuff. Tony is here. Tony, welcome. Good to see you. And Tony tuning in from Cardiff. Cardiff raining as usual. I think, Tony, every stream we've had, even back in the summer, I think it was raining in Cardiff. So, Tony... Are you following the rugby? Are you following the rugby? If you're over in Cardiff, you might be a Wales fan. And Wales must be in the quarterfinals. I think they've won all their games. So who are Wales playing in the quarterfinals, Tony? You'll, you'll have to tell me. Talking about the Rugby World Cup, of course. So what's next? Well, we were dealing with the pawn moves. And we're in this situation now. So the pawn moves are not quite accurate. We're currently identifying these diagonal moves as legal moves and of course they wouldn't be a legal move it would only be a legal move if there was a piece on this square here so we're going to go back through the code and then try to eliminate these these diagonal squares unless there's a piece on that square so from the language i'm using you know the more accomplished coders out there will be translating the language I'm using. This is such an important skill. It's a translation translation skill. That's what I used to do in Asia, by the way, in Japan. I used to be a translator. So if I'm talking about we want to do this unless, well, that's a condition. So we must be talking about conditional statements. So, you know, an a accomplished coder would, would be translating that English, the language I'm using or whatever language you're using, human language, into some coding concepts kind of live that's an important skill to learn you know this morning i was in a client meeting and we've just finished a project this project is in the uh, commodities uh, industry so it's a company that um, helps people move commodities around the world and um it was a very interesting situation, and it's a situation I really would have struggled with previously, but I think my skills have got to a decent level now. And the client was saying, uh, yeah, I want this improvement, this improvement, this improvement, this improvement. We had a list of four or five things. We were discussing two things. Firstly, discussing are they in scope for the work we've agreed to date, which is quite sounds like quite a high-pressure conversation. You know, we're trying to hand over the tool, and then we're... The client is saying, well, what about this? Is this in scope? And, you know, some of the stuff was in scope. You know, I just hadn't put it put it in. So I'm going to have to put that in, but it's not too much work. And then my customer was saying, OK, we want X, Y and Z as well. How much is that going to cost? So talking about live translating translation, I'm taking what the client is saying to me and thinking, OK, the technique, I'm going to have to do that. And calculating in my own head, how difficult is it going to be? How complicated is it going to be? How much time is it going to t take? But it's not just about time, of course. It's about how intensive is the coding as well. So trying to weigh up all these things in my mind. And then I gave him um, a quote uh, for how, how expensive it would be. So, you know, I do want to say all the stuff I tell you, you know, it's not just stuff I'm making up in my head, you know, it's stuff I've felt in my day to day work. Literally, I was feeling that today, that translation thing. So if you can improve these skills, I'm absolutely sure it's going to create value for you. Uh, Tony says we may not have won the Ashes, but at least we, we beat Australia in the Rugby World Cup. So you talk about Wales, Tony. So did Wales beat Australia? Um, the Rugby World Cup I've been kind of dipping in and out of, I've got to say. I haven't watched all the games. Uh, but I will be watching England on Saturday, I believe. England playing Australia on Saturday. So we'll be watching that 100%. So let's get into the code and let's see if we can eliminate these diagonal moves. And where's the VBA editor? So again, we've got to look through the code. We're being helped here by the structuring devices, the indentation and the comments. Then we've got to find a place for kind of eliminating cells here. Eliminating cells. Okay, so here we've got some logic to do with the knight. 
and this is eliminating kind of the in-between squares effectively um, to do with those night moves and you can go back a couple of streams if you want to know what I mean by that when we programmed in those night moves so here we're eliminating some squares well that's that's what we want to do now we want to eliminate some squares so maybe this is the part of the code we should be focusing on and maybe again can we recycle can we recycle this code and play close attention to the conditional statements around here are they all open and closed I mean this is a tricky one so this could get you into trouble because this looks like it needs an end if somewhere but actually this is a one-line conditional statement it just has this underscore that's concatenating the text together so Excel is reading that as one line so we don't need that end if remember one line conditional statement we don't need the end if like for example this one here on this line this is a one line conditional statement so this is a one line conditional statement disguised as some kind of two 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 line piece of code so that's something for us to look out for so I'm going to copy that down again recycling a structure that we know is accurate and then can we make some changes to, to this can can we make some changes changes to move us in the right direction so what's our logic going to be well here we're going to be talking about a pawn so that's fairly easy change that to p for pawn and then what squares are we talking about well in relation to the piece we're talking about the square that's uh, one up and one to the side uh, one down one to the side one across one to the side and and so it's going to be one one and one uh, one in both direction we could say so how do we translate that how do we translate that into logic well if the absolute value of the row count and the absolute the value of the column count equals two then they must both be one or it might be a two and a zero but maybe we can eliminate that in a second so let's just see if we can get this working so if the absolute value of the row count variable plus the absolute value of the call count variable let's say equals two equals two is that going to allow us to highlight those diagonal squares currently it says color cell equals false Let's get rid of that now I just want proof that the code is getting to this point that the conditional statement is working let's just say message box and could we get the the cell uh, the cell address how might we do that uh, here we go could we take this line of code control C and control V and then dot address at the end so we're kind of saying to Excel, okay, if you get into this conditional statement that we're working with here, then just pop up a message box and tell us which uh, square you're currently, um, which square you're currently working with. Yeah. So I think the important thing here, learning-wise, is just doing it step by step. So it's a tough bit of logic. It is for me anyway. I know in the chat, I think there's some more capable programmers than me, and you get people who are just logically very kind of fluent, and they can do it quickly. You know, I'm not one of those people. I'm, I've got a very analog brain. I have to go through it step by step. That can be beneficial in computer programming. That means you can you can make solid programs that are easy to understand. But the point is, if it looks difficult, just cut it down. Cut it down into four or five steps. Take them on one at a time. Keep the stress levels down. Uh, my aunt's saying in India there's a city named Nagpur it's always sunny in summers the temp 47 the temperature is 47 in Nagpur really really hot I don't mean to scare you okay so are you from Nagpur uh, my aunt? is that where you're from 47 I think is extremely hot I think me and Tony would be struggling uh, it's a bit warmer than Cardiff hey Tony 47 uh, where's the hottest place I've been I work in the Middle East work in the Middle East sometime go to Oman Bahrain and and that's that's as hot as it gets but in that part of the world it's like they never go outside so I kind of fly in go to a hotel and I work for five days in a hotel and then fly out you know and it's like you look out of the hotel onto the streets there's very few people walking around because it's so hot but I think I think that's the hottest place uh, that's the hottest place I go 47 I'm not sure if I could cope with that uh, Tony says we did so um, so Wales beat Australia then Tony so Tony tell me are England and Wales on a crash course collision course potentially um, are, how does it work in the Rugby World Cup is it like we're on the same side of the draw so we might be playing each other 
if we beat Australia and you beat whoever you're playing, then we might play each other. Then we might play each other. Okay, so is Excel getting here? Let's let's have a helpful annotation here. And let's say diagonal say diagonal pawn move here. So if it's a pawn and it's a di diagonal square, then just flash up a message to tell us the square that you're currently looking at. That's going to tell us that the code is at least getting here. Control S, save the file. Then hitting pawn. Okay, we've got G7. So I hit this one. G7. Okay, so G7, that's two squares ahead. So yeah, that makes sense though, because there the row variable is going to be two and the column variable is going to be zero. That equals two. <laughs> that equals two, of course, which is why we're getting that flashing up. Also get F8. Now we were expecting F8. So cell F8 is one of the, 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 the diagonal cells. And then do we get H8 too? Do we get H8? And we've got H8. Okay, so two expected results, one unexpected result. So how do we eliminate that? Can we extend this logic to eliminate that where we've got this, the, the two square move? We want to eliminate that. So can anybody help me in the chat? Ah, uh, so Tony says different sides. Ah, so Tony, we're going to meet in the final potentially, Tony. Well, that, that will be good. That will be good. So that's in the final must be in two weeks time. So maybe a week on Sunday. And Alam is in the chat, Mr. K. How are you, Mr. K? When are we getting together? When are we getting together to have some food? Let me know. Um, okay, so diagonal pawn move. So we need some logic in here. Okay. So and so if one of these variables equals zero, then we want to eliminate that because hmm. Now this is where we have the multiple uh these the, these and operators linking together all these conditions. It I always find it uh confusing. But well, we'll see. We'll see how we go. And col counts. So it does not equal zero, right? So the only possible scenario here is that is that yes, a row count equals one and col count equals one because if they don't equal zero, yeah. So we've eliminated that option where they equal zero. So hopefully that's going to eliminate this square two spaces ahead, although it will still be colored. I think it's still going to be colored. But when we have the message boxes flashing up, hopefully that message box won't flash up. Jeff saying call count and row count equals one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one way of doing it, Jeff. And maybe we'll have a look at that, Jeff, in a second, if we can get this working. So pawn, so we've got F8, that's accurate, and we've got H8, also accurate. Do we have anything else? No, so we've managed to eliminate that. Jeff, I'm going to try yours as well, just because I love people putting contributions in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, we, we could simplify this though, couldn't we? Right, couldn't we just say this? Um, the absolute value of row count is one and the absolute value of call count is one. I think, is this what you're saying, Jeff? And then we can get rid of, rid of this, no? Isn't that just a lot simpler? I haven't missed something. And there we go. Okay. Let's see. F8. Yep, we're expecting F8. So that's cell F8, remember. That's not chessboard coordinate F8. That's cell F8. And then we've got H8. Okay. Yeah, so that seems to work. So I think that's what you're getting at, Jeff. And clearly that's a more, that's a better solution. Yeah, it's more economical, less code, so less potential for confusion here. Um, Mr. Gay says, checkmate. 
we haven't got to checkmate yet, Mr. K. Alan, we haven't got to checkmate yet. Maybe in, we're on episode 24. So if you come back in for episode 2024, then, then we might be moving towards uh, checkmate there. Uh, DC says Jeff's got it. And DC suggesting the same idea. Jeff's saying that's it. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant teamwork. Okay. Okay, so what's the other condition here? Well, we've managed to isolate those diagonal squares. Is this working for the black pieces as well? Actually, let's let's check this. So we've got F8 and H8 there, that's accurate. So what, what about this pawn here, for example? H5, yes. And J5, yes, perfect. What about a pawn on the side of the board? I5, yes. And nothing else, perfect. Yep, so it seems to be working in both directions. Good. I think I was talking to DC. Uh, DC left a comment. The, these pawns, the humble pawn, is actually the most difficult piece to program because you've got these different movement patterns, different moving, movement pattern for capturing pieces, different move, movement possible for the first move because it moves first uh, two squares on its first move. And you have promotion, which I think we're going to just leave for the time being. Who can look this up on the internet? How many games of chess involve peace promotions? How many games of chess involve peace promotions? Can anybody look up? Or maybe just put your guess in the chat and I'll, I'll give a shout out to whoever's closest. I'm saying 20%. 20% of chess games involve peace promotions. So maybe that's something we can come to later, but there's more. There's the en passant rule. Of course, so I won't, I won't explain what it is now, but that's a special way that a pawn can capture en passant, passing by. In French, of course, when a pawn uh, moves past it. So that's something else we really should program in. But can anybody else look, at, uh, look up on the internet how many games of chess involve an en passant move? I'm going to say 2%. 2%. So I'm saying 20% for the percentage of games that involve a promotion. I'm saying 2%. So like 1 in 40 for games that have an en passant capture. So Tony says 5%. So Tony, is that 5% for promotions or 5% for en passant? So uh, let me know in the chat and I'll give a shout out to whoever's uh, closest. Okay, so it seems to be working pretty well. So the other thing, and probably the trickiest thing, is there has to be a piece on the square. There has to be a piece on the square for this for this uh, capture move to be valid. So here we've got cell i5, chess coordinate g6. And for that move to be valid, there has to be a piece. There has to be a piece on that square. So that sounds like, sounds like a difficult thing to do. But of course, we've got existing infrastructure in the file that's going to help us. And then edition 16 or 17, uh, we put this uh, function in to tell us the current cell. So we've got something in the background that's going to help us here. So let me know in the chat, what ideas do you have here? I've got a specific idea for how to do this, for how to work out if there's a piece on that square. And I think we have done this in a previous one, so maybe it's an easier question. Let me know in the chat what you think. Um, what are people saying about the promotions? DC says, I would, imagine, I would imagine more games would include promotion if, if players didn't tip the king when they know a promotion is coming. That's true. That's true, Dave. That's a very interesting question. You know, I don't want to go too far into chess stuff, but in computer games where they don't resign, where they play to the end of the, to the conclusion of the game, there's probably many more uh, promotions. So that's a good point. Uh, Tony says 5% for promotions. Mm, okay, I'm going to say more. I'm going to say more, Tony. More than 5%. I'm saying 20%. DC says then you have the rare game like the Four Queens game of Bobby Fishers. I don't know that game. The Four Queens game. Well, I don't know many games, to be honest, in chess. <laughs> I know some of my greatest games. There's not many. Um, so the Four Queens game. David, you'll have to link that to me. Maybe there's a YouTube video. Uh, that I can watch about that game. So my idea anyway is to use application.worksheet function. So remember application.worksheet function means we can call on a worksheet formula 
and which worksheet formula would help us with this. So again, it's a process of translation. So let's say in English first, uh, we need to find out if the coordinate of the square, the diagonal square, appears in this list here. If the address does appear in this list, then we want to do something. We want to specify that condition. So if we were just in the worksheet, not in the VB editor, what formula would allow us to do that? And if you watch my videos, it's a formula I use a lot, super useful. And it's one of the formulae that I'm always using in VBA and it can work in different ways. You can call it from the VBA editor, application.worksheet function, or you can have a helper cell, a helper cell in the spreadsheet, which is what I used to do earlier, earlier in my career. Now I found it's more efficient to use application.worksheet function, but both appro approaches have pros and cons, application.worksheet function being slightly more efficient, uh, but slightly more difficult to understand. Anyway, what's the formula? Anybody know in the chat what formula are we looking for here? And let me know your estimates. What percentage of games have promotions? What percentage of games have en passant? Okay, so we need another condition here. So application.worksheet function. Right, going to give away the answer here. It's going to say count if. Okay, and count if has two components. The first is the range we want to look at. So it's going to be engine G4 to G35. 32 rows, of course. G4. G35, we'll be very careful with the references here. If they're not accurate, that's going to cause problems. Okay, and then do we have a variable that's storing? Oh, uh, no. Okay, so this actually, we can use this piece of code here. But let's take you. Put you on the next line. Now, as far as I know, I haven't had an error so far. So I'm going to try to have an error free session here. Copy this down, underscore. So we shouldn't get an error because we've got the underscore. Where did it go there? Okay. And then can I just, yes, seems to be working. Okay, you see how it's getting confusing now. And this way it can it can be easier. It's often easier to break to break this kind of long condition down into multiple conditional statements just so it's easier to digest, easier to manage. Right, how many brackets are we going to need at the end? Two brackets at the end? Yes. What do we think? Two brackets at the end or one bracket at the end? I think it might actually be one bracket at the end. Um, equals one is that then ah no first error okay underscore there let's have then underscore okay that seems to have worked how's my logic there what do you think yeah Dave says on pass on probably less than one percent. Less than one percent of chess matches have on pass on. Is, is this information available on the internet? Has anybody got a cool chess website uh, that we can look at to get this kind of information? Maybe we need to get in touch with chess.com. Maybe that's what we need, a collaboration. Collaboration with chess.com. Finally, some recognition for the spreadsheet skunk work. See if we can pull, pull in some more viewers. Okay. Yeah, if this is returning a value of one, this application.worksheet function thing. Oh, is that uh, yes? Okay. Okay. I want to check I want to test this. Hmm. Okay. So what are we expecting to happen now? Well, this condition is not going to be met at the moment because there's no pieces on those capture squares. We can see if we look at the board, there's no pieces, you know, in front of the pawn here. For the pawn to possibly capture. So that part of this conditional statement 
where we've articulated that in code using this application.worksheetfunction.countif, this condition is not going to be met because it's going to return a value of zero. It's going to return a value of zero because the cell address is going to be empty. It's not going to appear the cell is empty, so the address is not going to appear in our little list here. So I think we're not going to get to the conditional statement, so we're not going to get this address coming up, I think. Hmm. Okay, okay, struggling with struggling a bit with the logic here. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So hit the pawn. Okay, you see our message box isn't coming up, so we're still coloring the cells, but our message box isn't coming up. So yep. Yeah, we we're expecting that. So what if we move a piece onto onto a capturable, if that's a word, onto a square where we could possibly capture, then we're expecting J8 to pop up now. And we do have J8. J8 has popped up there. Good. Well, if we put the pawn in this square, so now we're expecting H8 to pop, pop up. We do get H8 popping up. That's good. Well, if we take another pawn and put it in this square, then we should get two H8 popping up and then J8 popping up next. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is our setup board going to macro going to work? Control S save the file. Reset. Yes, it does still work. Fantastic. Okay, so seems to be working. Okay, how do we finish this off? I've I've kind of run out of um, com computational power, <laughs> run out of energy a bit, but we need to do something with this color cell. Okay, color cell starts as false. We initialize color cell as false here. Okay, so we're looking for a reason to make it true. Okay. So is it as simple as saying color cell equals true here? Hmm. That's true. That's true, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff says this is going to look at all pieces. It should only be your opponent's pieces. Good point, Jeff. Solid. Solid contributions. Yep, that's right. Okay, what's going to happen now then? Okay. Right, yep. That's not quite what we want, is it? Okay. Okay, got some help for me in the chat here. How are these poor moves working anyway? Do we have poor moves here? Yeah, we've got the poor moves here. Okay, let's go ahead over to the other side of the screen. Yeah, the poor moves are articulated here. Hmm. Just looking to understand the whole thing again. False. Okay. Yep. So if it's outside the board area, you exclude it. That makes sense. Exclude it if it's the piece. Yep. Exclude it if it's not on the diagonal. Yes. Color cell equals is false there. Hmm. Hmm. 
So when, when we put a piece on the square, is that going is that going to exclude it when we put a piece on a capture square? No, it still included that. Okay, maybe we can do it like this. What about this? Change this to zero. Change the logic. Okay. Okay, that seems to be accurate. So if we now put a piece on the square, is that going to give us the diagonal move? Okay, good. Piece over here. So that give us the diagonal move. Okay, good. And then let's see if it works for the black piece as well. Let's just put a pawn in the middle of the board here. So let's do nothing now. Okay, yep. Possible move for the pawn. Let's put the pawn here. So we're expecting this diagonal capture move to be possible. It's possible, yep. Okay, this is looking better. So I just managed to tweet, tweet the logic and get it working. Don't ask me to explain it, <laughs> but we managed to get it working that. Can okay, it set up the board? Right, the final thing, final thing we'll look at today is, can we, hmm. So Jeff is quite right. So we have this situation here, then that's gonna identify that, yeah that capture move, which isn't a capture move, is being identified as a possible move there. So we need to find out what the color of the piece is. Can we do that easily? Is that easily done? Hmm. Yep. Okay. What do you think then, Jeff? Any ideas for doing this? So at the moment... Okay, let's see if we can match this. If we can match it... Let's take this. Let's see if we can match. Let's see if we can match this. Okay. Functions. There. Now we're going to do match. Let's change the order here. So this code. Yeah, because this, this is going to give us the address, isn't it? And hopefully it's going to give us the address with the with the dollar signs in, which I think it will. That's the range to match in. Then the third component of the match formula is zero. Right, let's see if we can get this working then. in a message box and where are we going to put this hmm. okay let's just try to underscore here view this across two lines oh, so much better there goes my errorless session okay can we put this in here Okay, then, so now we can get rid of this underscore. So this is no longer a single line conditional statement. Can open and close it. Yep, end if at the end. Should bring our syntax into line. 
Okay, so we want the same thing to happen, but we're having this message box flash up. Now I want this message box to give us, I want the uh, message box to give us the position of the piece. Give us the position of the piece in this table. If we can do that, we can then find the color. We can then find the color of the piece. That's my best idea anyway. Tony says change the range in the count if function. Change the range in the count if function. G4 to G35. Is that not accurate, Tony? G4 to G35. Looks accurate, but I think you might be talking about something different there. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, let's let's take white pawn one, which must be this one. Put it there, where it can be captured by this pawn. Okay. Do we need another bracket? Is that going to fix it? No. Ah, uh, yeah, I totally see what you're saying, mate. I see what you're saying. So, oh no, I don't. So no, that range, that range is accurate. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can get back into break mode here. Debug. C5. So we're trying to match that value in this range. Uh, um, hmm. G4 to G19 for a red pawn to only say. Well, I want all the all of the pieces to be included. So these values only, only appear once in this whole range. So it should just be matching. It's one of these. Interesting. It's not something I've done before though, so maybe it's just not possible. Just check the components of the match formula here. Look at value, look up array, match type. Match type, zero is exact match, yep. Seems fine. Can we do this in here? Let's see if we can just do this in the spreadsheet. So let's put um, D5 here. Uh, let's just type it in. Match will bulk on any failure. DC, what do you mean by that, DC? Okay, that seems to work. In the spreadsheet, it seems to work. Hmm. So, why did it not work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying, DC. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. Yeah, it's never match is never going to return a value of zero. Um, but it should return the value. Um, okay, I think I see what you're saying. Ah, okay, yeah. So we can just we can just get rid of this. Yeah, we can just get rid of this, I think. Why was this here? I'm getting, getting a bit lost now. Why did we have that in there? Okay. 
So for file, control S. Uh, yep. to mess this up then <laughs> then okay okay yeah because this of course is uh, this is eliminating the squares this is not in, in, uh, including the squares this is eliminating the squares The address of the offset would have to appear. Yeah, yeah, exactly, David. Exactly, yeah. The address would have to appear uh, in the piece list here, absolutely. Or, or the match formula is going to return an error. Yes, indeed. Indeed, yeah. yeah I've got that bit. Um, it's more this bit here. So this is excluding the squares. Hmm. Okay. I think we're gonna gonna have to rejoin battle next time, but try to we'll try try to sort this out next time. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's any any further questions in the chat. But uh, made bit of progress there. Got to see some got to see some live coding. And next week, yeah, we'll be looking at can, can we sort this out so that we so that we avoid the problem where yeah. Let's just comment comment this out a second. Okay, so this issue here, can I recreate the issue now? Yeah, we want to avoid this 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 issue here. Where it's like I feel very close, I feel very close to working it out, but but we've probably done enough for today and it's nice so, something nice to get get us stuck into uh, next week. So yeah, there's no further questions in the chat. I think we made a bit of bit of progress there. So we made some progress to begin with, then got in a bit of a Bit of a tangle at the end there, but you know that's what it's like. That's what it's like with coding. And I do think we're making making decent progress every week now. A bit of progress every week. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't think there's any any further questions in the chat. So let me just give you the parish notices. So uh, this is the spreadsheet skunkworks channel. So we do every Tuesday we do live stream. Then at the moment I'm doing one other live stream a week, uh, one other day, just when I get the time, when I have a good idea. Uh, so make sure you've got the notifications turned on, you're subscribed, got the notifications turned on, that's going to allow you to access uh, the live streams, that means you'll get a notification. Then on the main Tiger channel, Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions, have a weekly release there, usually on Fridays, and that's a properly structured spreadsheet tutorial, so that's not live, that's properly edited, proper presentation if you like. Then we have Your Daily Tiger, hashtag Your Daily Tiger on Facebook and Instagram, I do a daily 60 second video there. So I did a video just before we went live. And then um, finally, we've got a paid paid course coming out that I'm currently writing and filming, uh, which is called Spreadsheet for Humans, just up here. Spreadsheet for Humans, that will be coming out uh, before Christmas. So if you want a structured way to learn Excel, Excel VBA based on my approach and you can see my approach on the YouTube channel you might be interested in that okay guys I think that's all for today I 